Dear students, in this module, I am going to talk about the secondary structures using Chow Fassman algorithm. You know that Chow Fassman algorithm can be used to predict the secondary structures that can be formed from primary sequences of proteins. More so, there are several tentative secondary structures that can be formed and you can use the propensity of each amino acid for a specific secondary structure and you can have a product of such propensities and you can have a value, an evaluation of an overall secondary structure. It is important to note that the secondary structures in proteins are formed as a result of hydrogen bonding between various amino acids. Now, if multiple neighbors are involved in the formation of these secondary structures, then it is important to consider not just the propensity of one amino acid, but also of its neighborhood. This is very important. Let's review why that is the case and why it should be considered. If you look at this slide, then you may remember that an alpha helix is formed by hydrogen bonding between every fourth C and N terminal as shown here and that this process is repeated for every N and C terminus with corresponding fourth residue later in the chain. Also, you may remember that beta sheets as shown here are formed once five or more residues they come together in hydrogen bonds and they form a beta sheet. So the role of neighbors in the formation of the secondary structures cannot be ignored. Going back to our example, we had a sequence of amino acids and we wanted to see which secondary structures could be formed by these amino acids. Let's take one possibility in which the first four amino acids make an alpha helix, the second, the next four, they make these beta sheets. So there can be multiple combinations that can be formed because each one of these amino acids may have a higher propensity for forming an alpha helix, but that they can also form a beta sheet or a turn. So given that each amino acid can form a beta sheet, a turn and an alpha helix, but with a different propensity, we may need to see what propensity will be for that specific amino acid given that its neighbors have certain other propensities. So for that, you need to construct multiple viable secondary structure conformations such as this one or multiple other forms like these. So it is important to note that one sequence can give rise to multiple secondary structure conformations. Now, which one do we choose? So for that, we can compute the overall propensity for each one of these secondary structure candidates. So to calculate the propensity of each one of these candidates, you simply look at the alpha helix formation tendency for these amino acids and the beta sheet tendency for these amino acids, you multiply them up and you can have a propensity for the formation of this structure here. In other case, in the second case below, you can take up the propensity of formation of an alpha helix for the first six amino acids and then you can have the sixth one's propensity for formation of a beta sheet here. So by multiplying all of these numbers and 0 0.75 from here, then you can calculate the propensity for the formation of such a secondary structure. If you repeat this process for these and others, then you can come up with a comparative and then select the one with the most highly probable secondary structure. This will help you to reduce the set of secondary structures that are available for computation. So in conclusion, you only have a very small set of secondary structures that 
can be there in reality and you can compute the propensities for these secondary structures only. You do not have to calculate the propensities for all possible combinations of alpha helices, beta sheets and turns, but you can consider the effect of one amino acid on its neighbor as is the case in bigger secondary structures and therefore reduce the problem size. So the highest net propensity will be the most probable secondary structure. 